Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys and girls are already aware, but my very good friend, Heavy D, real name Colin Newell, passed away. In fact, um, I was given an update literally two minutes ago to say that uh, they found him dead on his kitchen floor. Apparently he'd been there for probably about a week, something like that. Absolutely gutted. Really, really gutted about it. Um, Colin, he was one of these guys. I mean, he was certainly larger than life. Huge Arsenal fan. Um, he used to call me up all the time. At silly hours and not for like a one or two minute conversation, but it would go on for like an hour or two, this conversation to the point where I kept having to plug my phone in on charge and I'm trying to do other things. And he'd always catch me at uh, some of the most awkward times as well. Like I'm in the bath or I'm just having dinner or I'm cooking, I'm doing something. And my phone would go. Now, sometimes my phone would go and I'm like picking up the phone. I'm like, hello, Colin? Hello? 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 Colin, I have no idea what kind of phone he had, but he would put it in his pocket and he would always call the last person that he spoke to. And it happened so many times. And I like, call him back. It's like, yo, what's up? He's like, oh, sorry, mate. Did I call you? Oh, mate. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. This was... Colin. <laughs> it really was Colin. And the amount of conversations that we had, um, nothing like personal. I mean, I didn't ask him too much personal stuff. He didn't ask me too much personal stuff. I know that he was a big fan of uh, this channel, um, Sport and Icons, which is why he like approached me, started following me and we were talking. Of course, he's featured several times here on the podcast and that as well. And his first few interviews, for those of you who are aware of his YouTube channel, Boominator TV, I helped kick off a lot of that. In fact, most of his earlier videos through um, the interviews of podcasts with like Mickey Theo, Joe Egan, uh, Ty and Booth, uh, Ahara Davis and so forth. I actually recorded them for him. I helped record the uh, podcast now for him because he was a massive, massive boxing fan. He really was. Um, he was well and truly two feet in with the whole Mickey Theo versus John Fury thing. In fact, uh, he used to... Um, well, he's said to me quite often that he hopes that he's not going too far with it because he's worried that uh, people will really hate him or, or, or dislike him. But the thing is, is that he used to do it with the whole Mickey Theo versus John Fury thing just to hype their fight. He loved John Fury. He loved Tyson Fury and everything. But of course, he knew Mickey Theo on like a personal basis. So, so you know, he would wind up Mickey and say, are you going to get him? What are you going to do to him? When you get hold of John Fury and you know I'm gonna knock him out and blah 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 and that's what Colin was it was about hype he was about creating some kind of controversy but in real life I mean with the amount of phone calls that we had he was such a genuine soul such a nice nice man he really was um I mean as I said the amount of times that, that he will call me up and it'll be things like uh he called me up to ask me, have I heard this about boxing? What do I know that nobody else knows about um, certain things in boxing and that? And sometimes I would play a little coy because I knew that um, he did have a bit of a fog on on him. But quite a few times he like called me up. In, in fact, it's one occasion he called me up and I'm sat in the garden there. I'm uh, just enjoying a rare bit of sunshine. And he, and he called me up and I... I'd already decided that I was taking the day off. I weren't going to do no boxing videos. I weren't going to do nothing. I was just going to chill out, just unwind a little bit. And I and I see my phone going. And I see it's uh, Colin Heavy D. I'm like, oh no. What's he going to want now? He's going to want a podcast. Maybe he's found somebody. Because I know that um, he was trying desperately to try and get like a Tyson Fury or Billy Joe Saunders and that on. And I thought, oh, okay. I really can't be bothered to do this podcast. But... Hey, listen, if he wants to do it, we'll do it. So I picked up, I was like, yeah, Colin. He's like, hey, mine, mine. Great news. I went, okay, what's that? He's like, don't tell anyone. It's a big secret, but I've just got a role in the new movie, The Foot Soldier. The new Foot Soldier movie. which is like a football hooligan or Essex Boys kind of thing. I was like, bloody hell. Because we used to speak a lot about his career. Okay, now I had nothing to do with his career. I wasn't his agent, his manager, anything like that. But he used to call me up and just bounce ideas off each other like certain things that he wanted to do with the youtube channel and that as well there were so many things that i know colin had planned which was more than just boxing boxing he loved boxing absolutely loved boxing and he's like a sponge he would soak up all the news about boxing okay um and when you talk to him about boxing it's the only real time 
he would actually stop talking. He would actually just sit there and listen. He would. And but all other times, it's very difficult to get a word in with Colin. He was he was just constantly on the go, full of life. Um, but it's bizarre because some of the things that um, you know he was going to do because of where he lived, he was going to do some documentaries on like uh, London gangsters and things like that, and go interview uh, like his former gangsters. And uh, he was going to do and um, go around the house of the um, Enfield haunting and things like that because of uh, you know that's where he lived. And the thing is, is that all he wanted was his big break, and I, and I know that not a lot of people took to Colin very much. Unfortunately, they didn't because he was louder than life and he'd come across as annoying. You know, like through the storage hunters and whatever, he'd be like, you know, 250 quid, boom, and things like that. Some people loved it. Some people didn't like it. But that wasn't the real him. In fact, he used to say to me quite often, I've had enough of the Heavy D character. I'm tired of doing this all the time. It's like everywhere I go, somewhere sees me and I have to put on this pretense of, you know, like really happiness and the other, but in real life, I ain't really in the mood for it. So he was actually trying to phase out Heavy D and just become Colin. That's what it was that he wanted to do. Um, he got a role in um, his new TV series of like, I forget what it was that, that uh, it was called. In fact, he actually sent me a video clip of um, like a, um, what do you call it? Like a, a an opening, should we say it? Or a screening of this new TV series that he was doing, which was like, like him and someone else versus another guy and someone else where they would uh, buy a car, do it up a little bit and make money on it. Okay, it was like a car auction kind of do up, make money on, okay, it was just a show. And he was really, really happy about it. But due to the whole lockdown thing, that had to take like a bit of a back burner. There were some other things in the pipelines and that as well. Things were starting to finally move for him as far as his celebrity career was going. Of course, like most people know him from his Arsenal TV days or his big brother, the celebrity big brother, um, storage hunters and other things. But he was finally starting to get somewhere in his career and then he died. And we don't know what he died from. Um, there's rumours that it could be like a heart attack or whatever it may be. But he was a massive boxing fan. He was a real, real big boxing fan. And I know I'm babbling on a bit. I don't mean to, so I do apologise. But he's he was just larger than life. And all the time, it's like um, when he called me up, like my wife would uh, see it's him and go, all right, I'll see you in about an hour, shall I? He's like, yeah. <laughs> And, and it's just things like that because Colin was Colin. He loved to talk. He loved to be communicating with people. He didn't like being on his own. And that's pretty much how he, how he ended up, you know? I mean, if what I'm hearing is correct, where he was on the floor of his kitchen for about a week, I mean, that is absolutely gutting. And the thing is, is that what he wanted as well was that he wanted a wife and all that kind of stuff. In fact, uh, he was saying to me um, not so long ago that he wants to, or he either is or he was, I forget now, joining a dating app. He wanted to go online and find himself a wife. And I have no idea how far he got with that, but I mean, it's just horrible. I'm absolutely gutted, absolutely gutted for him. I said, we used to interview quite a few people, like a Mickey Theo, um, Joe Egan, Tyne Booth, O'Hara Davis, and things like that. And these podcasts will go on for quite some time to the point where, because I can only record on the app that I use to record, I can only do a maximum one hour before it just cuts itself off. And quite a few times I have to butt in and say, right, okay, we have to end it here and that. Cause Colin would just talk, 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 talk. It's like he'd ask a question and before the, the guest, like a George Hillyard and that, for example, would um, get a respond, he would give his own answers and things like that because he was very passionate. There was um, a lot of things about him. Um, he was very open um, about his gambling addictions and things like that. In fact, when he interviewed Ted Cheeseman, again, uh, like Ted Cheeseman is a good friend of mine, who they decided to do it in like a barbershop and they were talking about um, both of their gambling addictions and their problems and that. And Heavy D, he was uh, speaking to me saying that, uh, you know, he wouldn't mind um, having Ted Cheeseman or somebody else who has like, like some kind of gambling problem to go around to the schools and talk about the addiction of gambling and things like that. So he was very concerned. He was a very nice, genuine person. Um, you know, he really, really was. In fact, um, his boxing celebrity matches as well. 
Um, I know more recently he was trying to get Sam Jones into the ring. After for a long, long time, he was uh, trying to get Coogan Cassius for a for, for like a a exhibition fight and things like that. He never disliked Coogan or anything like that. He never disliked Sam Jones. In fact, I used to wind him up because we'd speak about certain things and he'd go, I'm, I'm not too sure if, if like a Sam Jones really wants to fight or anything like that. And I'll like wind him up. No, nah, mate, he's messing you about. He's messing you about. And I said to him, why don't you do like a diss track on Sam Jones like you did with, did with Coogan? He's like, yeah, 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 let's do that. And I think he was, at, I think he's actually done it, but I don't know if, if he's actually released. Um, in fact, he even offered me a celebrity boxing match as well, which is weird I'm, because I'm not a celebrity, but, but like an exhibition because he was struggling to find an opponent. He wanted to have one. And, uh, you know, he said to me, um, you know, we can do this, but don't worry. Um, you're not going to hurt me. I ain't going to hurt you. We'll just go, do like the four rounds and we'll do what we can to make sure it's a draw and things like that. Okay. This is what, what, what kind of was. He's wanted to entertain people. That's what he was. He was an entertainer. He really was, and I, and I do feel he's very misunderstood by a lot of people. And I can't stop thinking about it. I really can't stop thinking about it because it wasn't so long ago I was thinking I should really call him up because I haven't spoken to him in a while, which is unusual for a Colin. Um, so I haven't heard from him for a while. I really should, should like I call him up. And I thought, nah, no, nah, I won't because he's probably busy with a new movie the new Rise of the Foot Soldier movie and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not going to harass him or anything like that. What, once he gets some quiet time, I know Colin, he'll give me a call. Of course he will. And, you know, he'll give me some updates about his channel. In fact, his channel, are actually, um, all the settings that, that are currently on his channel with the um, upload defaults and things like that, I created that all that for him because um, he gave me his password in the beginning because he didn't know. He wasn't very tech, tech savvy. But so... He gave me like his password and I'll just like remote access it and things like that and go in there and I'll change all his settings. I'll upload like uh, his first probably about 20 videos and things like that. But eventually he started to get the hang of it himself and he started to really get into it. He loved doing it. He loved speaking to the boxers. He loved to go into the Taste of Cyprus and hanging around people over there. And oh, listen, anyway, I mean, I'm sure most of you guys and girls probably stopped listening by now, but. Anyway, rest in peace, Colin. Rest in peace.